Hey everyone, this is Major Batman here at Linkira Studios, here to show you my GitHub workflow that might help you out as an indie developer. I was working on my latest release of the Character Enhancement Toolkit, and I started playing around with some more of the GitHub features in their Project 2.0, and I wanted to just show how I use it, and maybe it'll help you in your own development endeavors. So let me show you how it works. <laughs> All right, so first of all, what I do is I utilize GitHub Desktop. GitHub Desktop, I'm not using a command line interface. I feel this is easy enough for me, right? And so what you do is you attach your repository to your current project. So you can see here that I have the Cinti Kids and I have some files here that I've changed recently. So one thing you wanna do is you want to look in your repository settings and maybe exclude certain types of files so that not everything is included. So for example, maybe .meta, uh, I believe it already comes with some ignored files that are inherent to Unity. So if you pick the right, right version, so you can see here that MDB and PDB, or you can add certain folders that are just ignored. So maybe like you have a third party asset and you don't want that to um, push it to your private repository. So that's kind of first, right? So you gotta have a, a GitHub repository set up and then with Git, uh, GitHub desktop, you tie it all together. And so if we go in here, open up a file. So I use Visual Studio Code and what's kind of cool is you can see the source control as well over here and it's tied into it. So you could you could also utilize, um, utilize Visual Studio Code and not use GitHub desktop. So I haven't quite used that by itself, but it mostly works as well. So let's um, let's open up uh, GitHub and show you what that looks like. So this is my GitHub repository. Um, and one thing that they have are these issues. And in the issues, you can see there's many different types and it's just a lot here. Right? I have a lot going on, 19 open, 55 closed throughout the throughout the the years that I've been working on this. But what you can do is you can create these projects. And so they have this classic project that was something that I worked on before. And you can see how this sort of looked like. And I kind of created this to do and progress done columns. You can kind of see that you can create subtasks and stuff. And it, it mostly worked. But they've recently updated the projects to include a little more uh, customizability. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is what it is. Basically, there are a bunch of different views. So this is my all to-do list. And so it has all everything in my to-do, everything that's in progress, and everything that I've done. And then these can get auto-sorted to be an archive later. And then in another view, maybe I have this prioritization where now I have, I believe it's the Eisenhower methodology of important and urgent showing where do these tasks fall in. And then further from there, you can just have this overarching viewpoint of a table view, and then you can throw in other fields. So for example, this priority wasn't something that's inherent to um, Unity project, but what I did was I went and created a new field and I made a, a drop down, a single select, and then I added these particular options and color coded them which is very helpful. And you could do that with however you want to do it. And so you can also add the status and I created this plan start date. And that is something that allows you to kind of create a Gantt chart of your files. So you can see what maybe I was supposed to be working on and whether I finished it. Um, so it's done, right? So we can start to see that if the red line is to the right of these greens, we aren't quite there. So that's helpful as well in its own planning thing. As a solo dev, maybe not, but Maybe there's certain time frames where you have time to work on activities, and so you can know what you're planning to do for that particular evening. So for example, this evening, I should be working on my left-hand presets, which I completed last night. So going down, maybe I need to work on Polygon Mech or Prototype Avatar. So now I have something tangible I can work on during that evening where I have maybe a few hours to make some forward progress on these. And I also added in this prioritization is the minus status done. So my done items don't show up on here because they're obviously done, which is kind of kind of nice. And then for this to-do list, one thing that you can also do, group by milestones or something of that nature. So let me show you what milestones look like. So this is my version 1.0.4. My plan for 1.0.4 was to 
update it based upon Cyber City and Polygon Mech. Those are two of the newer assets that were created. And because I'm so close to 1.1, I think I'm going to forego updating 1.04 for the purposes of 1.1. And 1.1, I'm kind of in the final stage of the setting presets. It all kind of works. And so this is my to-do list for 1.1. And then further out, I have my 1.2, where I'm planning to maybe do some thrown items and some different animations, maybe doing a mesh combiner in the future, color changers. And so this really helps kind of plan those bigger activities as you're working on them. Okay, so let me show you what the project looks like. So if I go into this issue, so prototype doesn't have avatar loaded and it's not quite fixed correctly. So I have labels over here, which I'll show you how those look. And then I have these milestones as well as um, my priority and plan status. So when I create the issue, I can fill these all out. Let me, let's go to this, the actual issue page. So this is the normal issue page that you would see. So there's, it's a little bit of a, a difference between issues and projects, but they're very closely tied together. So like I commented here, recommend changing to not use fixed scale characters. And so just a small change that I was working on. So in the issues column of your repository, there's labels and milestones. So let's go to labels first. So labels. So these are the ones I've created. Not all of them that, because this is a private repository, it's more for your own internal thought process of where things uh, fit. A bug, something's not quite working right. And so maybe it's a small bug, maybe it's a big bug, not quite sure. And I have down here problem solving. So maybe there's something bigger that you're like trying to deal with and it's not quite a bug or maybe there's a bigger issue behind it. And so maybe you can throw that and you need a little more time. Maybe a bug is, um, you know, something's just off a little bit. So the idea here is I have a bug, I have cleanup, I have documentation. Maybe the documentation also includes video editing. So as kind of a indie dev, maybe you need to do some trailers or some uh, pictures or stuff. So that kind of maybe falls under documentation. You could maybe label it marketing or something of that nature. So it keeps track that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, duplicate, maybe you accidentally duplicate a task or idea. Um, enhancement, these are kind of maybe the key features uh, that are tied to each other, uh, that are tied to maybe that milestone. I don't really use it in invalid yet, so this is kind of... And then I change something to test, so something needs to be tested. So maybe you built some stuff and you're like, um, you just haven't gone back to figure out if it all worked correctly. So in game, you it's supposed to work, but you didn't go run through your unit tests or you didn't program unit tests, and so you need to actually manually go back and test. And, and so in your in your closing out an issue, you maybe create a new issue. You can label these however you want, and you can even change the color. So we can change the color here to whatever your heart desires. So let's go to milestones. Milestones to me are the version updates, and you should have sort of this general roadmap of what you plan to do with with your activity or what you're planning to do with these releases or what it takes to get to project complete. So uh, this is what I have as my milestones. So I, um, because my repository started out as a kit enhancement toolkit, I adapted it to also include the character enhancement toolkit because there was some overlap. And now my repository is sort of both. And so I have to really track both aspects, although my kit enhancement I haven't updated recently and something I need to do. So you can see here I don't have, I have two open tasks for the kit enhancement toolkit and we can click here. So I need to go back through and I need to update the namespace and I want to do some scaling. But you can see here that like my version 1.02 included, um, included, these were the things that I worked on. Eyelash toggle, color selection for attachments, mass generator slider, adjust ca camera, and emotion and text animations. It really kind of shows you that you have this progress bar on these milestones, but they're tied specifically to these issues. And so in your issues, you can assign them to a particular milestone. Okay, so how do I create an issue? Well, there's two general ways you can create them, or and I'm going to maybe go over three, essentially. So in the project folder, you can just go over here and you can just add something. And for the purposes of this, let's say we need to update the readme file. And so it's a draft at the moment, just a to-do item. And if you think it needs to convert to an issue, you can click here, convert it, and select your repository. And it's now a new issue 75. So let's click on this issue. So when we pull it up, it's rather blank. There's no description. There's no, no preview comments. There's no assignees. There's no labels. Nothing. So you can go back through here and you can go through and you can do 
update that and we go it's a documentation label and it's going to be tied to 1.1 and it's on our to-do list uh, priority is not urgent or important and we're going to start it today so that's fixed um, and we can go back through and update this and when we're done we can we can close this right updating the readme file but if the readme file is, is is in our folder we need to update update that here so let's let's do that let's update this file and say um, added for video save it let's, let's go to our github desktop and i believe only the readme file will be here Kind of cool. You can see what we changed and automatically says update readme.txt. But one thing that we can do here is we can go close and then do the hash symbol and see now 75 shows up. The cool part here is when you say fix or close in these git comments and commit it, we push it to the repository and then we go back. Then we go back to the issue and it's automatically closed and it's updated in our milestones as closed right and in our project maybe there's a better way to create these issues and there is so you can create one as well from here um, but I'm going to show you that there is a potential to do what are called issue templates and so I have a few different versions here I'll include this link for the syntax for these issue forms to show you how to do uh, YAML or Markdown type templates and I'll show you both and kind of what I do. So the file here is you just put it in this .github and issue templates and then you need to create a YAML or Markdown folder. And so when you go to issues you click new issue and you now have each of those different files here. So documentation change. Let's get started. Well look at this. Instead of what we normally had we have a title we have kind of a what needs to update and where does it where do we need to update the file and what is it tied to so when we do this and then we have the version um, so here it doesn't have the project which is something that you can I think you can set maybe maybe not but so you but you know you can click it here and then you can click your milestone as well and then you submit the new issue so I kind of like the YAML better. So it looks like this. And then now we have um, potentially to set the priority as well. Not origin or important. And we're going to also start today. Parts all goes in there. So we have it here. Number 76. Uh, let me show you the other issue and then I'll show you how we're going to, we're just going to delete the line and close it. So if we click new issue, this is um, a bug report that is a markdown. And so for the markdown, it basically is more of a body where it kind of shows you what it should look like, right? And it looks a little prettier, but for input wise, isn't as clean, if that makes sense. So I actually have to go in here and update these steps. So similar, but maybe not as like input intensive. If we go to our progress, we can see that we have this update doc number 76 we can move it over to in progress this is something we're going to work on so if we go back over and we remove this line and maybe move this up save it we can see that it is now here and for the purposes of this i'm going to commit it directly from here and go fix number 76 and commit so stage you have to stage the change first then i can commit and it sends it and what we should see is that this gets updated. Once, once Visual Studio actually synced with GitHub, it now changed. So you can see here now it is closed. It was moved to to-do list. And this is something that can be done by, by your auto project automation, which that will be the last thing I think I'll show you. So in your project, you go over here and you click workflows. And then you can say items added to project. When an item is added to the project, can set a value of to do right and you can add more and when it's reopened do something when it's closed when the items closed set the value to done and auto archive after maybe two weeks so you could do things here I don't necessarily use the 
pull requests and things like that myself because I'm just pushing. And so if I do need to revert, I can revert back to a prior commit myself. But yeah, this so this is how I keep track of my project, what I'm working on, what I plan on working on, what needs to occur, uh, and then all having it in in a commit repository that allows me to see everything that I've worked on over time, which is kind of cool in a way. And yeah, I hope this helped. I hope this was something uh, something you haven't learned before or something that you wanted to just you know reach out and try. Uh, it's kind of cool. I've tried Trello and some other boards before. Um, I just like that. It allows me to be in the GitHub and 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 code realm and handle the project at the same time as I'm doing my code commits. So it kind of helps me. Um, and maybe it'll help you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this lesson and uh, follow me for next time. Have a great day. Cheers.